Um, I think the association was actually set up in 1962, mm -hmm. and then it was called the Kenya Bankers Employers Association. Mm -hmm. And as the name implied, it was um, uh, because the industry was growing, and the employers, as bankers as employers, felt that there was a need to bring the employers together and handle, at that point in time, the industrial relations that they needed to handle collectively. And so initially, the association mainly handled the collective bargaining agreement with negotiating the CBA with the, with the unions on behalf of the employer, which then was collectively doing it together under the umbrella of the Kenya Bankers Employer Association. I think the employer felt that um, whereas the union was uh, picking up strength, yeah. they also needed as employers to have strength in terms of uh, working together. Yeah. So they wanted to have an umbrella body through which they could relate with the union because the union at that point in time was working together as a union yeah. and on the other side from their end they were more or less like single employers. Yeah. So they needed to work together as a union so that they can be able to interact with the union as two bodies of equal strength. I think the critical thing there was the fact that I'm a, now the employer as, as, a, as, an, as, a, as a body had one common entity that could resolve the issue. And so now they were having a body through which they could have the collective bargaining agreement. And really from that point in time, the employer's body was mainly uh, handling the collective bargaining agreement on behalf of the employer with the union. Since then, I think the next one was, um, which did not um, uh, uh, you know, extend for a, for a period, was in 1998. You recall there had been a strike really out of um, something that was not an error on the part of the banks as an employer. I think the, they had, the, the government then had stressed on the need for uh, fringe benefits tax yeah, yeah. To, to go through. And so the, empl the employees felt aggrieved. Yeah. And out of that, there was a strike. Yeah. But you remember at the same time, incidentally, there was the bomb blast. Yeah. Now we had another common problem, yeah. and it was now difficult for the employees to continue striking about this grievance when we all as a nation are faced with the with, with the more serious problem. And so the strike in a way fizzled out and the employers got employees got back to work. Now the central bank actually what we have seen is over time um, um, uh, the relationship between the bankers association and uh, and the central bank has become more of a partnership. Um, even though the central bank still has got the regulatory responsibility over the members and the bank association is the representative body of the members, but the relationship between central bank and the Kenya bank association over time has more or less become a partnership, which is a unique kind of relationship. I've seen in other markets, we almost like would do not have a similar kind of partnership kind of relationship. And why am I saying is almost a partnership? We have implemented quite a number of projects for the betterment of the industry yeah. in partnership with Central Bank. Yeah. I can give an example like the check truncation uh, system. Yeah. Uh, we own the clearing house, yeah. and so um, yet Central Bank has got a mandate yeah. over the national payment system. Yeah. So the clearing house is a major component of the national payment system. Yeah. So in order for us to modernize the clearing house, which is a major component of the clearing, uh, the national payment system, yeah. we had to work with Central Bank in partnership. The clearing house is really um, the, 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 the house, the physical house, where the banks come to exchange the, the clearing effects. And by clearing effects, we mean the checks. So like, for example, if you draw a check and you bank it into your, you deposit your check into the bank, the bank will get that check and bring it to their clearing center which is a central place where all the branches bring their checks for each bank into Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Now then those checks are sorted out and they are taken to the clearing house. Now the clearing house is where all the clearing agents from all the banks come to meet and they exchange the banks. So you have checks that have been deposited in your bank mm -hmm. and you exchange them with the other bank which will also give you the checks that have been drawn on you but deposited at their bank. So at, that's a medium through which you exchange the checks. Now, 
then you go back with the checks and you decide on which ones you're going to pay and which ones you're not going to pay and you return them within a given period of, of time. Yeah. So now then the other bank will, after the period has expired, it will then credit the amount to the check that was deposited in the bank. That is physically how the clearing house works. Now, by the check truncation system, what you have done is that you have converted that manual process of the checks moving from where they're deposited to the clearing center, to the clearing house, and then back in case they bounce, back to the original bank and then back to the customer. We have now automated all that process and, uh, and, and, and made it electronic. So now, rather than the physical checks flowing, we take an image of the check and then it flows through the system, and then back. Yeah. What that has achieved is two. Uh, the, the process is faster, because electronic, so we are now able to clear the checks from the original 21 days, by the way, in the, in the early 90s, to now just about two days. Yeah. And in fact, we intend to go to zero days, same day clearing, yeah. eventually. Then the other thing is, uh, th by making this process electronic, we have eliminated fraud. Because you see, along the line, because of the manual processing, you could get checks substituted yeah. or checks amended manually yeah. through the process. But now, because electronic, all that is not possible. So you have made the clearing process much safer and much faster and more efficient. Yeah. It's not the system. Most of the places in the world, actually, the clearing house is owned by uh, Central Bank yeah. or run by the Central Bank and um, uh, members come in as participating agencies. Mm -hmm. Now in Kenya, we have always owned the clearing house. And um, uh, because the clearing house really is a forum through which the members come to exchange the, the, the checks. And Central Bank is also a participant mm -hmm. because it's the bank for the, for the government. Mm -hmm. So it comes in as a participant and also clears the checks mm -hmm. against, you know, against the other members. Mm -hmm. But having said that, Central Bank also provides an inspector for the clearing house. Because, as I mentioned earlier, Central Bank has got a mandate over the national payment system mm -hmm. in the country. And the clearing house being a key component of the national payment system, they have got to take a keen interest on it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they provide a, an inspector for the house um, to, to help us um, run the, the clearing house. I think one of the things is uh, one of our key roles as, uh, as an entity, we have mentioned the industrial relations which has been there and uh, we still continue doing, but our role has sort of like expanded and we see ourselves moving more into the advocacy uh, arena where we try to proactively influence policy uh, formulation uh, process. And so we engage the stakeholders in the policy formulation um, arena. And that's where our engagement with the parliamentarians, for example, comes in. Our engagement with the Treasury, um, because we submit, for example, to the Treasury proposals of um, policy proposals that we intend to see in the budget as the budget is being formulated. And that we do um, every year. And some of the proposals that we do make forth and defend at the budget committee level eventually end up in the in the budget proposal. Not all, but a number of them would end up in the budget proposal uh, document. Now, um, in terms of engaging the other parliamentarians, for example, you, you may recall um, uh, for the last almost one and a half years, there was the debate about legislating the interest rates. And there were arguments for and against and uh, we thought that it was a responsibility as an industry to enlighten or give our views to the parliamentarians who are in the process of trying to propose a legislation that we thought will have significant effects on the whole operation of the banking industry. So we had to give our side of, um, of, 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 of the story and we engaged them quite, uh, quite, 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 quite um, uh, aggressively because we had several meetings with the parliamentarians, different parliamentary committees. Uh, we were summoned to various uh, sessions of uh, the parliamentary committee briefings and uh, eventually I think our view was, was had. It's more or less um, 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 an association that tries to serve the best interests of the members. But of course we have got uh, the members on one side, we have got our consumers with the banking public on the other side, we have got the other stakeholders which is the regulator, we have got the parliamentarians and we have got to ensure that the interests of all these parties are well served through the umbrella association. We 
do not have the powers to punish because, um, as, as we said, you know, we are okay. an association of the members. members so yes. there is a regulator yeah. who has who got enormous powers yeah. to punish. But, uh, and then we have got the association which more or less try to act in the best interest of the members. Yeah. There is a mechanism yeah. um, because, you see, one of the biggest punishments that you can get even in a family is to actually to be, you know, um, to be expelled yeah. by your fellow family members. And normally that's a bigger punishment than actually being jailed. <laughs> so I liken the punishment from, from the central bank, for example, to being some, you know, um, some criminal justice, but the punishment by the association as being a family kind of punishment within a family setup. And you get that um, we have got rules, and in the worst case possible, we can actually expel a member. And the other thing is that, you know, we own and run the clearing house. Now, the possibility of being expelled out of the clearing house is so painful to a member that you would rather not go that route. And we have never come to a point where we have actually threatened to expel a member, but that is the worst case scenario that we will have to fall back to. And I, I think, by and large, members try to uh, ensure that you do not do something that will alienate yourself from the rest of the membership. The kind of um, uh, changes that we have tried to bring up within the within the KBA to be able to play our role that is widening now from the traditional role of a collective bargaining agreement to include advocacy and uh, also the management of the clearing house. Uh, we have had to um, uh, bring in capacity within the KBA to be able to handle that. And one of the things was that. For the advocacy role to be effective, it needs to be backed up by a strong research base. And be, uh, in, in, order, in order to assist that, you have set up within the KBA a center, which you are calling the KBA Center for Research on Financial Markets and Policy. And this center is coming up with the research findings that are, that are informing our advocacy initiatives. And that, that, in a way, has been found to be very effective because when you are giving an advocacy position from an informed base well founded by research, you are much better able to defend the position and justify the position than when it's just uh, based on, you know, um, um, you know, information that is not well founded because it's then easy to be challenged. But when you have got a well founded research, then it's much easier to defend your position. And you basically advocate for a much more well founded position.